Hi all, today we are going to discuss about negative sequence protection against unbalanced loading of alternator. So, if you take the positive sequence, if you are taking the alternator, so the positive sequence components will rotate in a particular direction. Let us assume it is rotating in the direction of in this direction clockwise direction at a speed of ns. So, obviously your rotor also will be rotating at a speed of ns because the positive sequence is rotating in this one. But whenever the unbalanced loading happens, because the uh, whatever the unbalanced loading is there or unbalanced load or the fault can be resolved into three components. One is the positive sequence component. The second one is the negative sequence and the third one is the zero sequence component. So, if you are taking the positive sequence component, this will be like this R, Y and B, it will rotate in this direction. So, based on that, the rotating magnetic field is produced. So, this is for the case of positive sequence. Now, coming to the negative sequence, negative sequence component will come like this. There will be R, this will be Y and this will be B. Negative sequence component will rotate like this, whereas the zero sequence component will be in phase with each other. And generally, the zero sequence component will pass only if the fault is associated with the ground or any load or current is associated with the ground. But if it is not associated with the ground, only positive and negative sequence components will be there. So, now due to unbalanced loading, if the loading because unbalanced loading is not associated with the ground, it will have both positive sequence component and the negative sequence component. The meaning of the negative sequence component means it will rotate in the direction of minus ns in this direction. So, this is for the case of negative sequence component. So, now the speed of the rotor with respect to the negative sequence component will be the rotor is rotating at a speed of ns in this direction and the stator negative sequence or rotating magnetic field is rotating at a speed ns in opposite direction. So, the relative speed between these two will be the relative speed is equal to 2 times of ns. So, because of 2 times of ns, the dynamical induced DMF will be induced in the rotor because the dynamical induced DMF is proportional to the speed. Now, the speed is equal to 2 times of ns. So, even though the negative sequence flux is less as the speed is very high. So, that is why a very huge value of the currents will be induced in the rotor or EMFs will be induced in the rotor that leads to huge value of current passing in the rotor conductors as well as the core losses. And now coming to the rotor core, the rotor core will have two losses. One is the hysteresis loss and the second one is eddy current loss. Even those losses depends on the magnetic reversals or the frequency of the magnetic reversals. But in this case, because the stator negative sequence is rotating at a speed ns, rotor is rotating in positive direction ns, relative speed is equal to 2 times of ns or the frequency of this hysteresis or eddy currents will be 2 times of the normal frequency. Because of this, the eddy currents and hysteresis losses also increases. So, let us try to summarize, then we will proceed further. So, if there is an unbalanced loading of the alternator, then the stator currents will have the negative sequence component and the field due to negative sequence components rotates at a speed of minus ns with respect to the stator. As a rotor rotates at a speed of plus ns, there is a relative velocity of two times of ns between the rotor and the negative sequence stator rotating field. So, this causes double frequency currents of large amplitude to be induced in the rotor conductors and iron. So, here do we know the eddy current loss are proportional to the frequency square into B maximum square? Here the frequency is the frequency corresponding to the negative sequence components. Because the negative sequence components are having double frequency, so eddy current losses will be double the magnitude. Similar is the case the hysteresis loss also depends on the frequency of magnetic reversals. Again here also FR is equal to 2 times of supply frequency for the case of negative sequence components. So, this also magnitude will be very high. So, we can tell that for the negative sequence component, the hysteresis and ready current losses also increased as well as the copper losses that will induce in the conductors also will increase. So, the rotor will get overheated because of this huge value of the currents. So, this can be represented of the form, the losses that are there that produces the heat, that heat will be in the form I square multiplied by T multiplied by some constant. This R represents the effect of the hysteresis, eddy current and the copper losses. I can by represent by some constant, that constant I am taking as R. This is I2 square into T. Getting it? So, we can tell that as the time is passing on, I square multiplied by the T, the temperature will goes on increasing and your rotor, there will be a cooling mechanism to cool it because cooling fan and other mechanism will be there on rotor. But 
it is a rate at which it can dissipate the heat is not very high so it is limited to a value so that value let us represent by a value called as k so generally the value of the k varies for the case of alternators from 3 to 20 depending on type of the alternator or size or rating of the alternator so if your heat that is produced is less than the rate at which the heat is dissipated then there is no problem we can allow the negative sequence components to plus but if the rate at which the heat is produced or the temperature increase is greater than this value at which it can be dissipated rotor will get overheated and it will damage your rotor even not only that the negative sequence components means there is an imbalance in the stator currents because of the imbalance in the stator currents that leads to overheating of the stator winding also so that is another problem so what i want the time in which the relay should operate should be less than or equal to from this i can write as k divided by i2 square into r or otherwise the time of operation of the relay should be inversely proportional to the current square we can get this one that means the relay that should be used for this purpose will be the inverse extremely inverse time characteristics are required the time of operation should be inversely proportional to the current square such relay should be designed so we go for idmt relay which will have the extremely inverse over current characteristics and generally the negative sequence currents up to 10 to 15 percent are actually expected because machine will never operate under balance condition always there will be some unbalanced loading will be there we can't expect all phases are loaded equally so that's why machine is already designed to withstand or dissipate the heat properly up to 10 to 15 percentage of the positive sequence component of current if negative sequence component of current is less than 10 to 15 percentage it can withstand but if this is crossed then the relay should operate so how this will be detected so detection of this this is my stator winding so for this three cts are connected so the cts will be connected in star because it is not differential protection only one side it is required this will be connected to a negative sequence relay and that negative sequence relay will operate a relay which will have the extreme inverse current characteristics so the relay construction we have already seen in the negative sequence relays in our module number three you can please refer there so here i am just discussing briefly what is discussed there because i hope you have already gone through it even if you miss I am discussing briefly here. So these are the three phase currents IR, IY, IB. Three CTs are there and one star point is also there. So this will be connected in such a way. This will have two branches of resistance. That means pure resistance. That means Z1 and Z2 will be purely resistive. And Z2 and Z4 will be have the combination of resistance plus reactance. And thus impedance magnitudes will be same. That means the magnitude of the impedance Z1 will be equal to Z2 will be equal to z3 will be equal to z4 all the impedances will be same but they are designed in such a way this z1 and z2 that means whenever the current let us assume some current is entering here ir this current will divide equally among this z1 and z4 because impedances are equal but the currents are displaced by 60 degrees by tuning the value of the inductance and the resistance in such a way we can get the value of like for example here this i1 and i4 because i4 is inductive so it will lag behind i1 by an angle of 60 degrees so that that gives the resultant value of the current ir so ir is divided into two currents so similar is the case you can see the current another current is given here that is ib so ib also will be divided into two currents one is i3 and i2 so you can see here i3 is pure resistive and i2 is passing through an inductive circuit that's why the i2 is lagging behind i3 by 60 degrees so the sum will be equal to ib so as the impedances are same the magnitude of this current i1 is equal to i4 is equal to i3 is equal to i2 will be equal to ir divided by root 3 similarly here it will be the case ib divided by root 3 in this way they are divided so now how this circuit will operate for the case of false so you can see here if you are going to this relay through this relay cable what current is passing here you can see the i2 current is coming from here and i1 current is coming from here and iy is coming from here so if you are taking at this node the sum of the currents will be equal to zero or the current that is passing through this one will be equal to iy plus i1 plus i2 the vector sum of phasor term of all these things will pass through your relay coil agree with me so we have to take the sum of iy plus i1 plus i2 that whatever is the sum that sum will pass through this one if sum is equal to zero then no current will pass through the relay coil it will not operate otherwise the relay coil will operate so we have to take the sum of iy plus i1 plus i2 
So let us see what will be the case for positive sequence component. So for positive sequence component, there is my IR, IY and IB. So from this, I can calculate because IR is divided into two components, I1 and I4. So similar is the case that IB, this IB is also div divided into two components, I2 and I3. And we have to take the sum of I1 plus I2 plus IY. So I am taking the sum of I1 plus I2. I1 plus I2 will come 180 degrees opposite to IY. As the magnitudes will be same, the sum will be equal to 0. So that is why your relay will not operate for positive sequence component. Now let us take the negative sequence component. So for the sake of negative sequence currents, this is IR, this is IY, this is IB. So again I am plotting this is I1 and I4, this is I3 and I2. Because I have to take the sum of I1 plus I2 plus I y. You agree with me? So you can see I1 and I2 are in the opposite direction. So the sum will be equal to 0. So the component I y will be remaining. So this I y will pass through your relay and your relay will operate. So we can tell that this relay can operate for the case of negative sequence currents. But there is a disadvantage of this relay. This relay will sense the zero sequence components also. That means the components associated with the ground also. So sometimes it may not be allowed and if it is allowed, there is no problem. It is a simpler circuit. For zero sequence component, you can see IR, IY, IB. So this IR will be divided into two parts, I1, I4. IB will be divided I3, I2. So because I have to take the sum of I1 plus I2 plus IY. So this will be I1 plus I2 plus IY will be very large magnitude. So the relay will operate for the case of zero sequence currents also. So, if you don't want your relay should operate for zero sequence component, it should only operate for the negative sequence component, then we go for this type of circuits. So, this will have a transformers like this, two transformers. So, one transformer that is connected between the R phase to ground because this is my R phase, this is my R, this is my Y and this is B. You can see the R phase is coming like this and returning back. And the second one is connected between, you can see this one, this is connected between Y and B the current direction will pass from IYB will pass like this. So you can see IR is passing like this, IYB is passing like this. So similar is the case, this IY after passing from here, it will pass like this, it will return back through your neutral point. That means this IY is connected like this, so it is connected back to neutral. I am repeating once again. So IR is connected to the R phase like this and through the y, R, y phase, so Y phase the coil is connected like this, the current will come like this it will pass through this, it will pass through this coil in opposite direction and return back to the neutral point. This is my neutral point. Similar is the case, the IB, IB current will pass in opposite direction to this IY current. It is designed like this and this induces the EMF in the secondary side and in the secondary side, the two circuits, one circuit is having a parallel resistance, another circuit will have a parallel capacitor in series with the resistance. So now this C and R are tuned in such a way, the value of this VB will be displaced with respect to the VYB by 60 degrees. That means VB will be displaced with respect to this VYB by 60 degrees and this one VA is designed in such a way it will be in phase with the respective value of the voltage. So you can see here for positive sequence component IR, IY and IB. So the component of current that is coming here, you can see here this is IY and IR in opposite direction. So the current will be equal to IY minus IB, this is one current, this is IR minus IY. So IR minus IY will be equal to IR, you have to take IY in the minus opposite direction, that gives my value of IR minus IY. Because of this IR minus IY, VA is induced in the secondary, that is VA, this is in phase with IR minus IY. So now coming to the second current in the second transformer, the current will be equal to IY minus IB. And the voltage that is because by tuning we will adjust in such a way VB will be lagging behind these currents by 60 degrees. So as they are lagging by 60 degrees you can see VA and VB are in opposite direction. So the sum vector sum will be equal to 0. It will not operate for the case of positive sequence currents. Now coming to the negative sequence currents. Negative sequence means this is IR, this is IY, this is IB. IR minus IY will be here. So VA will be in phase with this one. Then similar is the case IY minus IB will be here. So 60 degrees lagging behind this, this will be the value of VB. So the net value of the voltage that is applied across your coil will be vector sum of VB and VA. So VB plus VA will not be equal to zero. It is having some magnitude. So because of this non-zero magnitude, your relay will operate. 
So VA plus VB is not equal to 0. Now coming to the negative sequence component. So for negative sequence component, IR minus IY is equal to 0. No current will pass. Similar is the case IY minus IB is equal to 0. So because of this VA is equal to VB is equal to 0. So automatically the relay will not operate because no current will pass. So we can either go with the first circuit or the second circuit. The second circuit is useful only if you want specifically only negative sequence component. But the disadvantage is the circuit is very complex and costly. Whereas the first circuit is very simple and easy to construct and tune also. So depending on your application or the requirement, you can select any one of these two things. So I hope how to protect your alternator except the unbalanced loading is completely clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.